I want to continue to, to preach. We've had stuff come up, my anniversary and some other things that I've broken, broken this series of spiritual warfare. But I want to pick up again today with spiritual warfare, worship. And I want to, we have some, we have a great service planned for Mother's Day where the, where the Trascaneo Dance Ministry and the Flag Ministry will help me do the last installment of this, of this uh, uh, series on spiritual warfare and we're going to entitle that worship as well, uh, how that warfare is fought best when we worship the Lord. Amen. It's going to be Mother's Day, but mothers have a spiritual battle on their hands. Fathers have a spiritual battle on their hands as well. Amen. I want to look today for our thinking, for our, uh, for our time together in the 10th chapter of the book of Coming Out the book of Exodus beginning at verse number 3 of chapter number 10 so Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him this is what the Lord the God of, of the Hebrews says how long will you refuse to humble yourself before me let my people go so that they may worship me if you refuse to let them go, I will bring locusts into the tomorrow. They will cover the face of the ground so that it cannot be seen. They will devour that little you have left after the hail, including every tree that is growing in your fields. They will fill your houses and those of your officials and all the Egyptians, something neither your father fathers nor your forefathers have ever seen from the day they settled in this land until now. Then Moses turned and left Pharaoh. Pharaoh's officials said to him, how long will this man be a snare to us? Let the people go so that they may worship the, the, the Lord their God. Do you not yet realize that Egypt is in ruins? Then Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh Go worship the Lord your God, he said, but just who will go will be going. Moses answered, we will go with our young and old, with our sons and daughters, with, their, with our flocks and herds, because we are to celebrate a festival to Pharaoh said, the Lord, the Lord be with you if I let you go, along with your women and children. Clearly, you are bent on evil. No, have only the men go and worship the Lord, since that was what you have been asking for. Then Moses and Aaron were driven out of Pharaoh's presence. And the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over Egypt so that the locusts will swarm over the land and devour everything growing in the fields everything left by the hail. Moses stretched out his staff over Egypt and the Lord made an east wind blow across the land all that day and all that night. By morning, the wind had brought the locusts. They invaded all of Egypt and settled down in every area of the country in great numbers. Never before had there been such a plague of locusts, nor would there ever be again. They covered all the ground until it was black. They devoured all that was left after the hail, everything growing in the field and the fruit on the trees. Nothing green remained on tree or plant in all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh quickly summons Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now forgive my sin once more and pray to the Lord your God to take this deadly plague away from me. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If you read the book of Exodus, 
you will encounter no less than seven or eight phrases of the same of the same content that says uh, let my people go that they may worship it's in Exodus 4 and 23 and 7 and 16 and 8 and 1 and 9 and 1 and 8 and 29 and 13 and the 10th uh, chapter twice in this chapter twice in the 12th chapter two times let my people go that they may worship me amen but in the last verse that I've read to you today when Pharaoh says pray the Lord to to, to forgive me of my sin against you and against him and take this deadly plague from me. I want to talk to you about worship as a matter of life and death. Amen. Worship as a matter of life and death. Amen. Father, bless this word. Allow it to go forth with power, with conviction and allow us Lord to glean from this word today help for our own spiritual growth and help for our own spiritual awareness that we might be drawn closer to you and you to us in Jesus name I pray and all the people of God said amen in Robert Kennedy's biograph a cool sketch of himself, a biography of himself. He records a trip, a time when he made a trip to the Amazon and encountered one of the Brazilian Indians and asked him, what is it that you like doing most? The Indian replied, being occupied by God in his presence. And Kennedy thinking that there was something that had been lost in the translation uh, from English to the Brazilian language, asked the interpreter to repeat the question. And the Indian said once again, he said, to be occupied by God and in his presence. The answer was the same. The Indian was, was answer was an excellent uh, definition of what worship is. To be occupied by God and to be in his presence, true worship is the activity and the adoration of a redeemed people who have been occupied and who God is occupying in the, his very own person. Amen, somebody. Worship God in spirit and in truth is to worship him from the inside out, not from the outside in. It, 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 it's the worship God from truth from the very inner part of your, your being. God wants your heart. God wants to, you to worship him from your heart, not from what he, you can see and what I can see, but God wants true worship to come from, come on, help me out up in here. God wants your heart. It, it would be better for all of us if we learn how to worship the Lord now because of all the activities believer will engage in on earth in church in the only one that will continue in heaven is the worship of God if you don't like worship now you might as well turn in your clicks uh, your cliques and uh, everything else and, and, and give up because when you get to heaven that's all you will be doing is worshiping the Lord. Nothing, nothing else that we do really matters, but worshiping God is key and foremost. The Greek word for worship is proskuneo. You see, when our dancers come down, that's their name that they chose. That's the name that I encourage them to take because it means to reverence and to kiss the head excuse me, the hand, to kiss the hand of the one that provides for you. It has the connotation of a dog 
kissing the hand of his master who feeds him, who takes care of him, who waters him, and who is his very safeguard. It is the connotation of you coming to God and licking and kissing his hand for all that he has done in your life. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter number 12, verse number 1, I urge you, somebody say urge. I urge you, therefore, brethren, by of God that you present your bodies as living and holy sacrifices acceptable unto God which is your spiritual service of worship the King James reasonable service of worship uh, would you not agree reasonable to kiss the hand of the one that woke you up this morning that put food on your table that put clothes on your would you not agree that it's reasonable to kiss the hand of the one that put a roof over your head huh and clothes on your back and breath in your body isn't it reasonable to bow down before him and adore him because he's worthy to be praised oh yes he is he's worthy to be it, worship is a response to the to the greatness and to the goodness and the mercy of God. So when you show up in here on Sunday morning, you ought to show up with a grateful heart, and that heart ought to express itself in worship. Somebody say worship. Uh, when when we recognize Jesus's kingship. Lordship. We are compelled to give him our worship and our devotion. Worship leads to obedience. Emotion without devotion is nothing other than if our worship does not change us uh, from the inside out, uh, it has not been worship at all. Uh, worship draws God to us and connects us to God. Matthew 15 verse 8 says that this people draws nigh unto me with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but their heart is from me, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines and for traditional sake. That's what most of us come to church for, just simply to uh, complete the doctrinal uh, 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 menu of the Baptist church, uh, because mama did it, because papa did it, but, but the Lord says, if you come in and you're is not in it you are worshiping in vain we we can worship anywhere we can worship uh, and, uh, and, and and worship can occur in any context in the woods on the golf course or uh, uh, on the bus in your car you can worship God anywhere but the ideal and the optimum place of worship uh, is in public corporate setting when the body of Christ come together to acknowledge and to extol the living and true God. That kind of worship occurs only within the context of the Christian community in what we call Amen, somebody. Yeah, that's why you come to church so that you can extol God, so that you can God. Now, now you can stay home and watch the service on YouTube, or you can stream us live now with your app on your phone, but the right Hebrew tells us, let us not give up meeting together as are the habits of some, uh, but let us encourage one another. Uh, let us come together as one. Uh, the writer knew that God inhabits uh, the praises of his people. Help me somebody. Uh, that, that, that where at least one or two of y'all uh, are gathered together, uh, where two or three are gathered together in his name, uh, he will come into the the midst of us. Uh, when we talk about church, when we talk about real church, we're not talking about just about cultural uh, our cultural understanding of the word, uh, a building and a program. We're not talking about this building that we're sitting up in because the real church uh, is you. Come on somebody. Uh, there's a wide gap between the popular Christian understanding of what the church is and the biblical understanding of the word. The New Testament word for church is ecclesia. Somebody say ecclesia. 
Yeah, it, it means to be called out and to call together a certain kind of people to, to be in fellowship with one another. Uh, in the New Testament church, uh, it's not associated with a building uh, or a organizational structure, uh, but it was associated with people uh, who had things in common. Uh, the commonality that they had uh, was the fact that Jesus uh, had come to earth uh, and that Jesus had died on Calvary and that Jesus had rose. They came together to worship the God that saved them. The Christian church was organized around three basic functions. Uh, yeah, what community and witness uh, that there, there, there are many things we can do in church uh, and we got all kinds of auxiliaries in church uh, but the main thing that the church ought to function around uh, and is organized around uh, is the nucleus uh, of glorifying uh, of worshiping the living God uh, Paul writes in first Corinthians chapter number 10 verse number 31 so no matter whether whatever you do uh, you either Eat or drink or whatever you do, uh, do it all to glorify God. Uh, we are to live uh, to the praise and to the glory and the grace of God, according to Ephesians chapter number one, verse number six. Uh, we do that through worship, uh, through community, uh, and through witness. Uh, we are told in Scripture that God created. For his own glory, uh, not only people, uh, but everything that he made, uh, he did it for his own glory. Uh, the sun, and the stars, uh, rivers, and rocks, and clouds, and trees, uh, and everything else, uh, crocodiles, uh, and elephants, uh, and even ants are made to the glory of God because the entire created order uh, is an expression of the creativity of the living God. Uh, but mankind, you and me, uh, you and I, we are, we, are, we are the highest order of everything that God has created. Uh, David said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Uh, or the son of man that thou visited him? You created him uh, a little lower than angels. Uh, he says, we are made, we are fearfully uh, and wonderfully made. Uh, you ought to look in the mirror sometime uh, and just say, praise the Lord. Uh, you are God. Uh, you are yourself uh, and think about how fearfully and wonderfully you are made. Uh, you ought to have a praise come out of your mouth. Uh, the Lord who laid you down uh, got a heart in you that pumps uh, thousands and thousands of gallons of blood uh, and runs around the clock. Uh, been running for 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 80, 90 years. You ought to look in the mirror and give God praise. Uh, When you look at yourself, uh, you see the power and the glory of God. And it ought to make a praise uh, and a worship well up in you. Uh, just look at yourself. Uh, your hand. Uh, I was watching this picture about robots. Uh, and how many, ro how many robots it has to create. Uh, they have to make over 15 robotic hands. Uh, that one hand can do in one moment one has to do that and that and when you can do it with one hand and you can do it in one move look how God has made you just think about it you can walk around you can think you can add and subtract and multiply and divide. God has given you a brain to decide. You can ride down the highway and your computer is working, telling you when to move over, move left, move. God is great and you ought to praise him for it. The fact that God has crowned us above all everything else uh, ought to make us, ought to compel us to worship. Uh, the, 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 the mighty clouds of joy said, if a, if a bird can say thank you, uh, you ought to have a thank you somewhere. Uh, just look at the creation. Paul says, all of creation uh, glorify God. Uh, right now, the, the, the creation is beginning to glorify God for bringing life uh, in the springtime. Uh, the flowers are blooming. Yes, they are yellow, red, and blue, and all kinds of colors. The trees are blossoming, uh, turning green from the depth to live through through the harsh winter that we just endured. Uh, and if you come through something, uh, if you've been through something, uh, you ought to give God a praise uh, for bringing you out uh, and giving you life again. 
ought to help you to worship him uh, in spirit and in truth. Uh, it should help build us up uh, into a responsible community uh, where we really care for and equip one another. Uh, that's what church is really about. Uh, a body of believers uh, who have all things in common. Uh, and when I see you falling down, uh, I encourage you. Uh, I don't pull you down. Uh, I go encourage you. Uh, and when one of us mess up, uh, some of us ought to go straighten them out. Come on, somebody. Uh, in love. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, in love. Uh, we ought to do it in love uh, to make each other better. Uh, because as you get stronger, uh, I get stronger because you are part of the same body uh, that I'm connected to. Uh, you're weak. Uh, then I'm going to become weak. Uh, that's why it's spiritual. God, uh, for me to tear you down uh, or to pull you down uh, because we are part of the same body uh, and nothing reveals that truth more than corporate worship uh, when we come together uh, and we begin to sing together uh, and pray together uh, and take communion together uh, corner near somebody say corner near this word karnania means to participate. Uh, that's why we've been trying to get you to get involved uh, in worship uh, because it means to participate. Uh, it's usually translated into our English word fellowship uh, and has its root meaning uh, in sharing something in common. Uh, the Bible says we are all priests uh, and before God uh, and the things in common. Uh, it doesn't distinguish between those who are ministers uh, and those who are not. Uh, the Bible says that the church is a community uh, that is in the process uh, of being equipped, being prepared uh, for the work of service uh, so that the body of Christ might be built up. Uh, the primary purpose of the church, my brothers and sisters, uh, is to worship uh, the living God. Uh, worship is the central content Text, uh, in which we encounter uh, the living Christ. Uh, it is the place where God indwells uh, and meets us uh, and occupies the space where we are. Uh, worship is uh, the source every other activity in the church will flow. Uh, yeah, when you worship the Lord, uh, you can expect healing to come. Uh, when you worship the Lord, uh, you can expect blessings deliverance to come uh, if you worship God uh, God will show up because God inhabits uh, the praises of his people uh, when the blessing when the praises go up uh, somebody ought to know that the blessings will come uh, because God inhabits the praises of his people uh, and if you won't want nothing to happen uh, just don't do anything uh, don't say anything uh, and God will pass right on by your pew uh, right on by you uh, and go to where somebody uh, is lifting up their hands uh, opening uh, their mouth uh, and opening their heart uh, can I get a witness in here uh, I come to praise him uh, because I need a blessing uh, from the Lord anybody need a blessing from morning now 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 you don't have to worship him like me I don't have to worship him like you uh, but I do have to worship uh, if I want something from the Lord uh, there's such thing as a quiet with a worshiper there's such thing as a as one that move and active uh, but one way or another if you want to get something from the Lord uh, you better open up your heart uh, and allow the presence of God and, uh, worship is the essence uh, of Christian strength uh, to overcome the obstacles in your life. Uh, I don't care. You can pray until the cows come home. Uh, but if you never praise God, what he's already done in your life, uh, ain't nothing else going to happen, brother. Ain't nothing else going to happen, sister. Uh, worship uh, will move obstacles out of your way. Uh, didn't you hear David? Lord, uh, the joy of the Lord uh, is my strength. Uh, so if you come in here weak uh, and torn down uh, and you keep your head down, uh, you ain't going to get no strength. Uh, but if you come in this place and the David, uh, the joy of the Lord, uh, open your mouth uh, when you don't feel like it. Uh, open your mouth uh, when everything in you says shut up uh, and watch the Lord give you strength. comes to spirituality. Uh, worship is a matter of life and death. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Uh, that's
text is teaching us uh, that you got to worship God uh, and God will, will move on your behalf uh, whenever you intend to worship him. Uh, can I get a witness here? Uh, now I, let me lift up four things and take my seat. Uh, this text teaches us first of all uh, that there, it is dangerous uh, to deter the worship of God. Uh, tell somebody it's dangerous. Uh, it's dangerous to get upset because somebody is worshiping God on your pew. Uh, it's dangerous to worship to, to get upset because somebody is standing up uh, and you sitting down. Uh, just get on up with your lazy self. Uh, come on somebody. Uh, get, they in my way. Go ahead and move around them. Uh, come on somebody. Uh, it, you, you, it's dangerous uh, to get up no, get annoyed uh, when because somebody else uh, is worshiping uh, a certain way. You got to take it honey because you can worship however you choose uh, but don't hinder me. It's dangerous. Uh, I, I'm not making it up. It's in the text. Uh, in chapter number 10, verse number 4 and 6, uh, Moses tell Pharaoh, uh, if you refuse to let us go and worship, uh, God's going to bring some locusts uh, into tomorrow. Uh, now listen here. Uh, this announcement of danger uh, is an act of grace on the part of God. Uh, for he said the plague wouldn't come until tomorrow. Uh, and that's what the Lord does for all of us. Uh, he gives us time to change our mind. Uh, he gives us time to change our ways. Uh, he gives us time to stop sitting down on our do nothing uh, and get up and give him some glory uh, and give him some praise said uh, if you don't stop trying to stop us from praising God uh, if you don't stop trying to hold us back uh, God is going to send some stuff your way uh, that you ain't never seen before uh, that's why you don't have to worry about folk uh, if you are a worshiper uh, if you are a praiser of God uh, you don't have to worry about folk who get in your way uh, because God will move heaven and earth uh, to get that stuff out of your way he can get the glory out of your life. Moses says, if you don't stop fooling around with us, uh, if you don't let us go so we can go out and praise and worship the Lord, uh, God is going to send some stuff your way. Uh, don't you know God has done it before and he's doing it now? Yes, he can move. God didn't deliver black folks so us to sit up and act all cute. Come on. Come on up in here. Uh. God didn't deliver you from Jim Crowism uh, and from racism uh, and from all the stuff that went on in the South uh, and uh, from all the racism uh, that you had to endure for you to come to church uh, and act cute with your new clothes on. Uh. Uh, come on up in here. Nails and your new hair and your new suit and your new shoe. God delivered you uh, so that you would be a witness uh, to tell somebody uh, that God is good uh, even in the midst of your trouble. You, you, you know what's wrong with black folk now? You know what's going on in our, in our neighborhood? Uh, we done got too much, uh, and we think we got it by ourselves. Uh, we done forgot that it was God uh, that delivered us. Uh, it was God that opened up doors for us. Uh, it was God away for us I, out of nowhere yeah yeah these folk have been in slavery for 400 years uh, they were toiling and they were locked in chains uh, and only did God deliver them uh, when they had a mind uh, to go worship uh, help me somebody uh, I don't have time to get into of the text uh, but Moses uh, didn't just go in there uh, and start talking come on y'all let's go have a civil rights march uh, no Moses went back uh, and reminded them uh, about the God of Abraham uh, of Isaac and of Jacob uh, and when Moses finished talking about what God had did in the past uh, they said let us go worship this God maybe he's the same God now that he was back then uh, let us go worship that he might deliver us uh, from this iron hand. And when they started, had a mind to worship, uh, God loosed them uh, and let them go. Uh, God will loose you uh, when you decide to praise him, when you decide to worship him. God will loose you. Four hundred years. 
no civil rights march, uh, 400 years, uh, no picketing, uh, no boycotting, uh, only when they decided to worship uh, did God open up the doors for them. Uh, and now only when we began to worship uh, will God put us into some of the mess uh, that we're seeing in our neighborhoods. Uh, women who can't even answer their own door without getting shot in the head, uh, drugs on every corner, prostitutes bisexual and, and this sexual and all Bruce Jenner's all over the place God, God won't deliver us the most watched episode ever want to watch a man who wants to be changed to a woman huh Sodom and Gomorrah all over again. And God ain't gonna put a ain't gonna ain't gonna bring judgment on this mess. Huh? You, listen, just 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 take a take a 101 course in in ancient history and, and, and history itself and find out that every kingdom that fell fell when it fell into immorality. Look at some of the look at some of the Roman statues, and and see some of the stuff. Just you know what I'm talking about. No clothes on. Most of the Roman statues have no clothes on. They they expose because the the, the, the Roman Rome. Had into that kind of immorality that everything was a sexual revolution in Rome and, and, and it was no secret it was no secret that, that many of the leaders of Rome were homosexuals and if you don't think some are working around New York City let me leave that alone before I get in But God wouldn't release it until they began to desire to worship God. Then, 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 then secondly, secondly, unless I, unless I get in big trouble too. It's not left up to us to determine who's a worshiper and who's not. Huh. Just because you're making noise don't mean you are a worshiper. That's a good sign, but it doesn't mean that you are a worshiper. Come on, somebody. Look, 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 look what he says. He says, he says, Exodus 10, 11. No, you can't go, all of y'all. Just take the men. That's who you were asking for in the first place. <laughs> don't take the women. And don't take the children, because if you get all of these folk together, and they all become acting like families, come on somebody, acting like somebody who got some sense, then, then, then I know that, that, that trouble. So no, y'all just go, we keep the women here. He was trying to decide who could worship and who could not. And, 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 and some of us, are just as bad. We try to disseminate and try to discern who, who's a real worshiper and who's not. But anybody who know that the Lord has blessed you uh, and that God has blessed you and your heart is filled with joy, you are a worshiper. If you know that the Lord woke you up this morning and not the alarm clock. And you know it in your heart. You are a worshiper. If you know that the car that you drove here this morning is not really yours. Is a gift from the Lord. You are a worshiper. If you know that the house you're going back to uh, is a gift from God, and not because you are a hard worker, but God has blessed you, uh, you are a worshiper. Thirdly, 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 
30, 30. He, he, said, he said, you can't determine who, who, who's going to be a worshiper and who's not. And then Moses says to him, God requires and deserves all of us and all of our stuff in worship. Tell your neighbor he deserves it all. He, does, he don't want it all, but he deserves it all. And only when you come to the point where you, where you know that everything belongs to God and you're willing to sacrifice whatever God seeks from you uh, will you truly become a worshiper that God can bless abundantly. Come on, somebody. Uh, remember the people in the book of Acts when the church first was on fire, when everybody had the Holy Ghost speaking in and had them gift of prophecy uh, and then they brought everything uh, at the house deeds their, their car notes and everything and laid it at the feet of the apostles uh, because they knew that everything on to God. Now guess what God did. Uh, God didn't take all of this. He redistributed among all of and the scripture according to some of the, the historians uh, that all the people were better off uh, because some of the people were sacrificed some of what they had to help those who were poor. That's all tithing and all giving in the house of God is about trying to release you from some stuff so that God can bless you with some stuff. You can't get nothing if you don't. God, God, because it's a test from God in the first place. See, see, the more God gives you, the more he expects you to give. And, and, and if you hold everything that God gives you, guess what? God is going to hold back. You remember the, the, the lessons of the three talents. Uh, one got five, one got ten, and one got fifteen or twenty, whatever. And then one that got the less, the one that got the least of them all, he buried his in, in the ground. Huh? And the rest of them, they went and invested, and they did some stuff with it, and they did this with it, and, and they made it multiply. And when the Lord came back to give account for what they, the one said, hey, I know you're a hard time. Master, so I buried it in the ground. The Lord said, You laser, give, give me, give, give me. Took it from him and went and gave it who already had more than enough. God knows how to take stuff from other folk and give it to you. I know that's a fact. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. He, Moses said, Moses said, No, we're taking our women. We're taking our men, we're taking our children, boys and girls, and we're taking our livestock, and we're taking our goats, and we're taking our, and we're taking our mules and our horses and our chickens and frogs and everything else we have. He said, because we're going to celebrate. Listen, 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 Moses talking. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, y'all. Listen to Moses. He said, we taking chickens, dogs, cats, everything we got because we going to a festival. I say festival. We, 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 we going to celebrate what God is doing and what God has done. And, and Moses says to him, he said, and we don't know what we going to need. He says, we need, we need, we, we need these bulls and these, these cows, these cattle, because we're going we gonna to give God something. We're going to sacrifice while we out there celebrating. We're going to give God something. And, 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 and we, got a, we got six million people here. And, and, and I don't know what God is going to require from us, but whatever he requires, we're going to have enough. Will you make up in your mind, my brothers and my sisters, that you're going to worship God with all that you have. God will make sure that you have more, more than enough. That's why, that's why, that's why, that's why when they left out of Egypt, after 400 years of slavery, they left rich. You, you better read it in the Bible. They left, they didn't leave poor and broke and busted and disgusted. They left with everything that the Egyptian had. They left with all the gold, all the silver, all the cattle and everything. Because God knew how to bless them. Let me, let me give you my last point. 
Failure to worship God invites death. That's, Sister Rice, what you said, that's heavy? Let me help you lift it. <laughs> Failure to worship invites death. It's in the text. Pharaoh quickly summons, quick, li, 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 he, he, he been brushing them off. You see, you see, you wonder why your washing machine keep breaking? Your, 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 your new car seems to be a lemon. Hmm? You, you, you wonder why you can't get no rays on your job? Hmm? You wonder why nothing seems to be going your way? It's because the Lord has put a plague on you. And, 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 and this is the good news about it. That the plague comes in stages. Hmm? Read ten, ten plagues. The first one wasn't so bad. The second one wasn't all that. Bad. But each one got worse and worse and worse until finally God had to give him the ultimate plague. You see, these locusts is is next to the worst of all. First of all, God, God, God's going to kill everything that you have. Oh, y'all got quiet then. <laughs> A refusal to worship God for the blessings that he has given you invites death into your life. Spiritual death first then physical things will begin to deter in your life. Plague of flies and gnats. Hmm? And all of this stuff start to come until finally he gets to the plague of locusts. Now, you know what locusts do. They eat up everything. Somebody say everything. That's why, that's why you can't, that's why, that's why when every time you check your pocket, you broke. Don't, don't, don't care how much overtime you do, it seems like it won't ever be enough. Because the plague of locusts, huh? Because, because you're not giving praise and thanks for what he has been, how good he has been to you. So, so the locust, he, he, the locust has eaten, is it eaten up all your overtime, eaten up your raise, eaten up your promotion, hmm? So, 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 so everything, that his officials say, why don't you let him go? Can't you see we done lost everything? All of Egypt is ruined. And Pharaoh says, yeah, I guess ain't nothing for us to do. But so he quickly sent for Moses. And he said to Moses, he said, he says, all right, I finally give in. But pray to the Lord to take this plague of death from me. Moses says, okay. But guess what? Overnight he had a change of mind. And so God had to send the ultimate plague. So he told him the next morning that, that, that every firstborn child, you, you, you wouldn't worship. I took your car, I took your house, I took this, I took that, and, and you still wouldn't worship it. Now, I'm taking something that you love the most. The ultimate plague of death. That's why worship is a matter of life and death. You want to go, you don't believe me? Go to a church that's dead and keep going to that church, that dead church. Like shouting John went to a dead church. And they, they got upset because shouting John wanted to shout and John wanted to praise God. And they put him out of that church according to Shirley Caesar. But John said, well, if you won't let me shout here, 
I shout out in the cotton field. Hold my mule. Now, 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 I'm, I'm taking my seat, but let me, let me explain to you why it's so important for you to worship. Because worship is the source of spiritual strength. When you worship God, God, I don't, I don't want to get into all the theological stuff, but God is a stole, X, E-X-T-O-L. That means that you are in your mortal human weakness lifting God to the loftiest heights that you possibly can with all of your mind, all of your heart, and all of your soul. And when you do that, God sends you power. Come on, somebody. He sends you joy. He sends you peace. Now, I told you that the locusts ate up everything, but when you start to worship, according to Joel, God will restore all that the locusts and the canker worm have eaten up. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, huh? Yeah. When something is dead and then it get up, huh? Come on. Hey, God will send you power to overcome every obstacle that's blocking you from the progress that he wants you to have and the, and the blessing that he wants to bestow upon you. Let me, let me, let me tell you a secret about me. When I was, when I was growing up, my father used to take me to see wrestling, uh, professional wrestling. We used to drive to Spartanburg and my father would take me every Saturday wrestling in Spartanburg and my favorite wrestler y'all won't know nothing about him my few of y'all might his name was Billy Two Rivers amen he was an Indian fighter and Billy Two Rivers used to be getting the devil beat out of him but every time he was beat down Billy on the floor barely can move Billy got up to his feet just a little bit. Uh, Billy would go into his war dance. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Hey, Billy, Billy, Billy would bang it. And, and when Billy finished doing his war dance, it was all over. Everything in the ring, out the ring. Uh, and he stumped on everybody. And so uh, when I was, I was about 15, about 12 years old, and I said, I want to be like Billy Two Rivers. Uh, and so I got six sisters, all of them bigger than me, most of them bigger than me. Uh, and they used to just do me in they thought. Uh, and every once in a while, uh, I, when I got enough, when I had enough, they would tie me down on the ground. They would sit on me and play with, pull my hair, all kinds of little old stuff. Uh, but when I had enough, somebody ought, ought to help me up in here. I, I, I would get on my feet and, and I would go around and, I, and, and, and you know what? They, they knew that when my dad stopped, it was going to be all over for them. Uh, so by the time I finished dancing, uh, they were all gone. They, they done ran out the house. Uh, and, and, and what I found out, what I found out is that while I was, uh, it, it just gave me confidence. It, it just gave me strength. Uh, it gave me strength I didn't know I and I think that's what happens when we praise God, uh, when we start worshiping him, uh, when we start dancing, uh, we get confidence. Uh, know we have uh, and so we started thinking like David uh, I can run through walls uh, I can leap over truth uh, I can praise him uh, I got strength uh, the Lord is the strength of my life uh, the Lord is my light uh, and my salvation uh, whom shall I fear uh, I got power when I worship so so the moral, the moral of that last story is, if I ever go into my dance, y'all better get out of here. Let me open the doors of this church. Candidates, baptism, under your own Christian experience by letter. There's one here who know God that God has been good to you. God has blessed you. You're uprising, you're sitting down, you're going and you're coming. And you like, 
my young brother this morning, feel like you haven't given God enough praise. You ought to make up your mind today that you're going to start to glorify God. You're going to start to worship God. You're going to start to praise God and give him all the glory he deserves. But if you don't know Christ, he's the center of all of our worship. So I am with our deacons and with our ministers to come and receive Christ as your personal Savior. Is there one here who wants to receive Christ? Candidate for baptism, Christian letter. Is there one here?